Hey everyone. So today I wanted to do just a real quick tip that I found out, a little trick that I found out this weekend after I was trying to process some data that I got from a recent dark sky trip. Now I'll probably do a separate video on the trip itself because it was amazing, but the first real image that I was putting together was of the lagoon and Trifid Nebula. And I didn't have a whole lot of time on the subject, but it came out so great except for one thing. So let me show you what I was running across. So I am overall super proud of this image. It's looking great, except I notice, see, feel like I've got a lot of blue stars in there, a lot more than what seemed like should be the case. And so then as I zoomed in, I noticed I was getting these halos, this kind of blue slash purple fringing around everything and it is just all over the place. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. It's everywhere in the image. So how do you remove this stuff? You know, I know that there's a variety of reasons why this could be happening. Maybe my blue channel was slightly uh, less focused in than the other ones, which would make a lot of sense. Um, given that I wasn't refocusing between my filters, uh, it could be some chromatic aberration, a lot of, lot of different reasons. So I know this problem's been out there and people have solved it, so I went looking on how you do it in PixInsight. And boy, I found a lot of different solutions and they're all very, very complicated, at least for the ones that I found. Um, I'm sure there are some pretty simple ones. Most of them involve pixel math, uh, which I am not all that strong in. And I was going, man, I wish there was something as easy as what I could do with my DSLR because I know that a lot of the Adobe tools, um, you know, when you're looking at a, a camera raw file, uh, have some things that will help you with this. So I started just kind of messing around. I was like, man, I wish I could pull up photos that were taken on my normal Astro camera in, uh, in something like Lightroom. Well, turns out you can. Um, once I was just playing around with it, you can do that. I never knew that before. Uh, when you go to import, as long as it's a, a format that can be read, so I had to you know, convert my file to a TIFF. Uh, but once I did that, I was, able to, um, I was able to go ahead and pull the file in. You can see I've still got all the fringing here. Um, and so, you know, I wanna go ahead and edit this. So I'll go into the develop mode in Lightroom. Um, and the thing that I really love about Lightroom, if you have the Adobe suite, uh, it, it can be really helpful for all your normal photos, especially anything you take on a DSLR. But opening it up so that it can use kind of any TIFF here, as long as it's high quality enough. So I saved this uh, as either a 16-bit or a 32-bit uh, TIFF, really allows you to use a lot of the other tools that you have in here. And one of them let me uh, get down to it here. It's called Lens Corrections. So when you open up Lens Corrections, in general, they have some stuff that you can do by profile. And this is super easy if you've got, uh, say, like a Canon camera and a Canon lens. Uh, it'll do a lot of this stuff just for you based off of what Adobe has learned about the lens. But in my case, I'm doing this with an astro camera through a telescope. So I'm going to use the manual one. And then I want to defringe what I'm doing. Um, and there's a lot of things you can do on these sliders to try to you know, dial it in. But let me show you how easy this actually is. I'm going to click in here and I'm going to use the eyedropper tool. You can see it gives me a little grid of the pixels with a with the crosshairs right in the middle. And what I'm doing is I want to get the blue around these stars gone. So I'm just going to click it. Hey, look, I'm done. That's it. So let me go ahead and put that here, zoom back out, and now there is no blue on that image. So I turn it off. All those stars are blue and really distracting. Turn it on, and I've got an image that's that's just completely free of that. Didn't have to do a create a star mask and then a mask inside the mask and then subtract things out from each other, any of that. I just had to click the eyedropper tool and then click a part of the image. Now. Let's say I picked it in the wrong place. Oh, uh, we can't can't find any fringe there, right? It'll give you, it's smart enough to know that. Uh, now I've still got some red fringing around some of these teeny tiny stars that I kind of, you know, could get rid of, but this one has a little bit of a limitation on the fringing it's doing. Um, so the blue one was really the one that was distracting. One click and it's gone. Um, 
you know, kind of can't beat that. Um, I'm going to do a, a separate video in the future here about um, Lightroom for astrophotos because I'm finding in the last few days here that there's a lot that you can do here. You know, even something as simple as the white balance. You know, if you can use an eyedropper again, go to a very neutral, you know, let's say I went to a non-neutral part and this is this is what my image looked like to begin with. You know, all of us have had that kind of image and we're trying to get a decent white balance. Eyedropper on kind of a neutral part of the frame and you've got, you know, a pretty good first stab at it. And you can kind of play around with the different areas until you get one that's pretty good and then adjust manually from there. Uh, and there are just so many uh, little tools in here that uh, that'll warrant you know a whole separate video, but I really wanted to share that defringing one, um, you know, and then my final image uh, across the board there look like this here. Um, so and really every every other thing out after that, uh, just removing the fringing there was all stuff I just did in Lightroom here. So there's a lot you can do in here uh, once you've stacked the image and done something like a background extraction process. Um, so uh, I'll do a future video on that, but I really just wanted to share that quick tip. If you have Lightroom already, you know, if you're already paying for that, that Photoshop license and Light, Lightroom's just coming with it, give it a try. Some of the, some of the built-in little easy things in here, um, the equivalent in something like PixInsight, uh, you know, involves a bunch of different mask processes and math and stuff like that. Uh, pixel math to, to make it all work out versus a button click here. So maybe that'll save you some time. Uh, it certainly did for me and, and made me a lot happier with an image that I thought was kind of wrecked uh, at the beginning. So that's it for this one. Just a quick in and out. And, uh, you know, until next time, wish everybody clear skies and go shoot something.